Hello and welcome to MedEd West. My name is Sandy Nelson and I'm a consultant in emergency medicine in Altley Galvin a and &E. I'm also a member of the simulation team over here in MedEd West. And part of our role is to provide teaching to medical students and doctors through the medium of simulation. So what is simulation? Well, it broadly means reproducing clinical scenarios and environments in order to support learning. So this can be as lo-fi as practicing your injection technique on an unsuspecting orange, to using our virtual reality headset to assess and treat a patient, to using simulation mannequins that can talk, breathe and give you blood. We've been asked to give you a demonstration of the types of simulation that we regularly undertake over here and we hope it gives you an idea of what we do and the kind of experience you might get as a medical student, especially if you're trained in our first class facilities over here at MedEd West. A common training scenario is that of a cardiac arrest. It's important that all members of nursing and medical teams are competent in managing an arrest scenario. So doing simulated drills is an ideal way to keep your skills up and in date. In this case, an emergency department doctor will take a standby call from the ambulance service to say that an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest is en route. The doctor will then use her team leadership skills and awareness of human factors to allocate roles and brief her team. Here we go. Hello, Elton Galvin, standby phone. Right guys, so that was the standby phone. Um, we've got a cardiac arrest coming in, ETA is about five minutes, six year old gentleman at home, had initially a chest pain and then collapsed to the ground. Uh, so the initial rhythm was VF and I believe they've delivered one shock. So they'll be coming in uh, five minutes, so we need to get full PP on. Ethan, are you happy to do airway and confirm cardiac arrest? Yeah, I'm happy. Perfect. Uh, Mike, are you happy to do a quick chest assessment and then if you get access in um, and get the drugs prepared as well? Absolutely. Ursula, are you okay to do the defib? Yeah, no problem. Great. And Owen, um, will you be able to do chest compressions for us? No problem, yeah. Perfect. Grant, so we'll just go get our PP on now. Okay guys, so we're just going to confirm cardiac arrest. Ethan, are you happy to do that for us? Yeah. Grand. Owen, are you happy to stop compressions now? Yep. And no signs of life, cardiac arrest. Yeah, Owen, back on the chest. So we'll just wait and get a hand over now. Okay, so this is Jimmy. He's a six-year-old gentleman. He was complaining of some chest pain at home and he collapsed. He did CPR. It was good quality bystander CPR when we arrived. He was in VF, we delivered one shot and brought him here as quick as we could. We haven't given him any drugs. Okay. Ethan, are you happy with your airway? I'm happy. Okay. Um, Ursula, can you man the deep yeah. for us? Mike, if you have listened to the chest um, and get some IV access in for us. Okay, okay deep fib is on, ready for a rhythm check. Okay, so we're just going to pause now for a rhythm check. So if we stop compression. Grant, so that looks like VF, so we'll prepare for a shock if you continue compression for us. Okay, I've got air entry. Okay, so charging the defib, everybody stand clear except for chest compression. Okay, chest compression is clear, top, middle, bottom, shock delivered, hand back on the chest. Okay, so continue compression, so we'll start uh, another two minute cycle. Ursula, are you happy to do time for us? Yes, I'll be time. Okay, so we'll get the IV access in and some blood off. And um, this will be our third shot if we need to give it, so then we will prepare some adrenaline and amiodarone. So look, I have the access to the and blood Okay, perfect. So this time, uh, now we'll start thinking about our any reversible causes. Uh, so hypoxia, Ethan, are you happy with your ventilation? Yes, I'm happy. Grand. And on chest examination, any signs of attention in your thorax? No signs of tension. Okay. Um, Hypovolemia, so we'll get some fluids going in there now, but from the history that may not be the cause, but we'll get some fluids in now at the minute. And um, we'll wait for that blood gas to come back to see if there's any electrolyte abnormality. And um, we'll get a temperature check now as well to exclude hypothermia, but again, very unlikely. And um, toxins, so there's no history of any overdoses. Um, thrombosis, so no clinical signs of pee from the history. Considering the history, we need to um, think about cardiac pathology. So our team leader has very succinctly and efficiently gone through the common reversible causes of cardiac arrest that we look for. These include things like hypoxia, lack of oxygen, hypovolemia, lack of volume, and things like heart attacks and pulmonary emboli.
Can you just tell us in two minutes you're up there? Yeah. So one of the most important things to ensure is being performed now is good quality chest compressions. So as is being demonstrated, you locate the correct position, which is two finger breaths from the bottom of the breastbone. You put the heel of your left hand and clasp your right hand over the top, lock your elbows, lean over the patient and press down firmly five to six centimeters, allowing full rebound of the chest in between times. You're aiming for a rate of between 100 to 120 per minute. And then after we just get the ultrasound, have a look in the heart, because they're honestly split that there's no tamping at. Okay, rhythm check. Yep, so still in BF, continue compression. And um, then if we prepare the amiodarone and adrenaline to give after this shot. Okay, charging. Can everybody stand clear except for chest compression? Okay, chest compression stuff. Stand back, top, middle, bottom. Shot delivered. Yeah, continue compression, please. So once we get the amiodarone and adrenaline in, um, we'll go for a further few minutes uh, and recheck the rhythm. The team have been asked to administer the resuscitation drugs adrenaline and amiodarone. These help stimulate the heart and increase the chances of recovery from cardiac arrest. Great, so that's amiodarone and adrenaline in. Great. Mike, can you also check and see the blood gas? Is ready? Yeah. As well as ensuring there's minimal interruptions to high quality chest compressions, it's vitally important we also get oxygen into the patient's lungs. This is normally achieved by passing a tube into the patient's trachea and then attaching it to a bag valve mask which is also attached to oxygen. The bag valve mask can then be squeezed. You're aiming for a rough equivalent of 30 chest compressions to two breaths and this ensures that you're giving the patient the best chance of recovery post arrest. Ethan, are you happy with your airway still? Yes, I'm happy. Okay, time for a rhythm check. Okay, so we can pause. Let's check the pulse. Yeah, so it looks like that's a rhythm compatible with life. Have we got a pulse, Ethan? He does have a pulse. Okay, so he's we have... He's on his own. Perfect. So we now have Ross. Ethan, if you continue uh, to look after the airway. Mike, if you can perform a full A to E examination for me. Ursula, would you be able to get a 12B ECG? Yes. Okay. And we'll order a chest x-ray as well, Owen, if you yeah. can do that. Um. So considering his history, we'll have a look at the ECG, see if there's any signs of myocardial infarction. Um, if there is, then we'll um, ring CCU um, and we'll give ICU a call now as well. So I hope you find that a useful glimpse into how a cardiac arrest scenario can be simulated for medical learning. What I find particularly impressive about our team was the way they all individually performed their jobs to a T, with clear communication and professionalism. Our team leader was clinically spot on, but almost as importantly, she used non-verbal cues, which are difficult to perform in full PPE, and spoke to the team members by name using closed loop communication. She was clear and concise with her thinking and instructions. My thanks to the amazing talents of Owen, Ethan, Catherine, Michael and Ursula, and we'd be delighted to welcome any of you in the future to MedEd West. All the best going forward. Mm -hmm.